Hi everyone, this is day two of Uncovering Oklahoma's Adventures in Davis, Oklahoma. There's so much to do here that we couldn't fit into one day. So on our second day, we've got brand new adventures for you to discover. There's zip lining. We've got a sweet tour for you coming up. And of course, the food. What trip to Davis isn't complete without barbecue, chocolate, and some fun high-flying adventure? Come along with us. We're here with Steve Burrow of Air Donkey Zip Lines, and this is your five year anniversary this month mm -hmm. of the Zip Line Adventure Course here in South Oklahoma. Kind of tell us how this got started. Where did you get this idea? Well, uh, we had this property for quite a while, and uh, I had done some zip lines in other states, and um, I decided, why can't we do that here in Oklahoma? So. We put it up and we've been going for five years. I imagine it's a little more complicated than just <laughs> making yeah. the decision. What does it right. take to develop a zipline adventure course like this in Oklahoma? Well, uh, of course, we had to do a lot of engineering, a lot of planning. I had a number of engineers here and contractors. And then, of course, when it come down to doing the actual rigging and, uh, and the, the setting all the course up, uh, there are contractors that do this all over the world, so I had to get them and have them come in and put it all up. So how many zip lines do we have out here? Uh, there are six zip lines, main zip lines, uh, which total, there's over a mile of cable in the air. And then of course we have the, the bunny slope and some practice lines, and there's a sky bridge that you walk over, just more or less a uh, swinging bridge. Oh. So. Um, How high do you get on some of these? Well, it kind of varies. You know, for instance, uh, this pole in the back, that's about a 70 foot pole, but it's already on top of a 100 foot hill. So. Oh, wow. So, but it varies as you go across the terrain. So, uh, it's, it feels like you're higher because you're not in a jungle and yeah. canopy. So. Well, for somebody who has never ziplined, if you're, you've got people coming through Oklahoma, and they want to give it a try, what can they expect? What does it feel like to zip line? Well, it's not what most people expect. They think it's going to be like a roller coaster that gets your stomach and everything. Yeah. But basically, you're just flying through the air, and uh, it is louder than you would think with the trolley and the equipment mm -hmm. that we use. but you can look around, see all kind of sights. The main thing most people are worried about is if they're gonna stop at the other end. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's, <laughs> that's why we train them uh, before they go. Because you use a manual stop. Uh, the, uh -huh. the person doing the zip line is right. responsible for slowing down and stopping the Yeah, stop. and you're basically just dragging friction on the line behind you. Uh -huh. However, with the guides there, uh, we're there to make sure you don't hit the pole or anything like that. <laughs> I've, I've got scars to prove that, so, you know, but. You sacrifice yourself for the safety right, of your yeah, rider. That's right. Well, that's let's right. talk about safety. I know a lot of people who may be a little wary about zip lining. Safety might be an issue. Let's talk about how safe zip lining really is. Well, actually, uh, there are so many redundancies built into it. Um, like, you're, you're gonna be hooked up in three places uh, most of the time, and it, always at least one place. So uh, there, there are backup systems. Uh, if your trolley failed for some reason or something, you're still hooked on another place. Yeah. And uh, of course, we're inspected uh, annually by a private engineer and the state of Oklahoma. Um, they guess we're considered an amusement ride. Well, yeah. But the best part about this course compared to a lot of the others is that you do get to get out and see some nature and you know it's more of a bonding thing most people you know they come here they're very shy you know and then by the time they're about through about two of these the whole group is like exchanging phone numbers and everything so yeah. well there's something about that adrenaline and the adventure mm. that makes people just really connect right. very very quickly and uh, you know this shared fun and <laughs> right. your heart racing uh -huh. and everything like that now, besides that, you, you guys have cabins here. You can stay here overnight if uh -huh. you want to. Yeah, we have a couple of rental cabins that uh, 
uh, we actually had before the zip line. And a lot of people, of course, the crossbar ranch is just right up the road, which is the ATV park. We do offer a discount, of course, if you're staying in our cabins, you can zip uh, a lot cheaper. So, gotcha. <laughs> you know. But it's uh, basically, you get to know your guides and uh, it's more about the experience because, you know, a lot of zip lines are the same. I mean, when you get going, but it's really about the people and if you're having a good time. And that's why we're here. We we hit the safety first and then you can just scream and holler. And, uh, you know, we've heard every curse word ever invented, <laughs> you know, from some of these people, so. Well, uh, is there anything you'd like to add that I haven't asked you about? I just think, Everyone should try this, you know, and see what we have, especially uh, people around locally. Uh, many people don't even know what's behind those hills over there, you know. And most people, when they see it, they go, wow, I didn't know that was there. And then these are Davis residents and different people as well. But just plan to come and have a good time, and uh, you don't need to bring anything. But I do like M&Ms. Uh, so, <laughs> peanut or plain. So I get so, you in good, huh? Yeah, we can do some trade. There maybe. you go. But, uh, just plan to have a good time, but uh, dress for the weather and, uh, um, you know, wear appropriate footwear and things like that, you know. Yeah. But, uh, um, we've been so no very high fortunate. Heels? Well, you, no, no high heels unless you're, uh, well, you can no wear flip -flops. high heels if you want, but it's a long walk <laughs> yeah. in high heels, so. But uh, you should try it. I think we're good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We are here at Bedre Fine Chocolates in Davis talking with Kay Colbert. She's the general manager of Bedre Fine yes. Chocolates. And this is a beautiful store. It's filled with all these <laughs> very tempting delights. So kind of tell me about the history of Bedre. How did this come to be here in Davis, Oklahoma? Well, Bedre actually um, was bought, it was a small manufacturing company in Ada originally. Um, the owner founded it as a handcrafted chocolate company, so there was a lot of handcrafting going on and we've actually carried that tradition on over to the current company. Um, the Chickasaw Nation bought it in 2000. Uh, we moved here to this location in January of 2013, although the retail store opened in uh, I think that December of, uh, you know, the year before. And Governor Anna Tubby, uh, actually when we bought Bad Dre, he was very excited because it added diversification to uh, the Chickasaw Nation business industries. And uh, we're just really happy now that his vision has brought us to the point where we are part of um, a, a destination location for South Central Oklahoma, for the Chickasaw Nation tourism efforts. And we're happy to make chocolate every day. How can you not be happy to make chocolate Exactly. And you've got handcrafted chocolate here. How exactly is the chocolate made here at Bedre? Well, we're, we're sort of a, kind of a, you might say a hybrid when it comes to production because we do handcrafting. We do our recipe development here on site. So when we do our centers for our bars, those are our, our own ingredients and we mix them and uh, we have a molding line that actually produces, you know, the bars and the meltaways. But other things like the sensations, which is the uh, caramel and pecans covered in chocolate, um, those things are handmade. And when we do get to go back to the plant, you'll get to see we're actually hand making um, the uh, chocolate covered uh, popcorn and nuts and stuff today. What can visitors expect when they come to visit Bedre Fountain Chocolates? They pull over on exit 55 and they're like, hmm, chocolate factory. Well, uh, when you come in, of course, we have this big glass window and you'll be able to have a chance to see them making chocolate either off the line or some of our handmade items. But when you're in the store, you know, they're sampling. Uh, we have two candy case or chocolate cases and there's a lot of items in the chocolate case that's not necessarily a product line. So you're, you will not see it like in, you know, some of our retail stores that carry the product. Uh, so it's very exclusive. So there's a lot of reasons just to come here and try some things that you can't always have, you know, just in our regular product line. Well, when so. you're driving down I-35 and you see those big signs that says free chocolate, I mean, yes. how can you resist that? Well, it's a delicious story. Is there anything you'd like to add that I haven't asked you about? Um, no, we just like to have everybody come out and visit us here and watch us make chocolate. And just remember that we're Oklahoma's chocolate company. Stopped off for lunch at the 77 Diner. I am having the taco salad. Got some greens, got some beans, chili and tortilla chips. 
this place really specializes in your typical home cooked meal. You're gonna get burgers, you're gonna get chicken fried steak, you got a whole breakfast menu with omelets and biscuits and gravy. And I was in a made of course salad, but also some meat, so taco salad is just perfect for me. We are at Caveman Antiques here in Davis, Oklahoma. As you can see behind me, this is an amazing collection of vintage motorcycles, vintage cars. It's a real passion for Mr. Webb, who started this museum. So kind of tell us how this got started. Where did this passion for old vehicles come from? You know, I really don't know. It's kind of very unusual for me to uh, to do this. We. This used to be a motorcycle shop, and, uh -huh. and then I bought one old motorcycle, which is up there on the top, and it just it grew from there. I, uh, my wife, I accuse her because she showed me how to use the internet. Oh no! So it's actually her fault, but it's just something that we're retired now, and uh -huh. we you have to have something to do, and if you've got any money, it's not worth anything, you know. So yeah. we're we're investing. I guess you'd call this our 401k. This is your, well, you've got yeah, some pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, amazing. and uh, we just uh, it's just something that I didn't know I was going to get hooked on. I got hooked on these cars about a couple of years ago, and and I want other people to be able to see it too, because there's not going to be any more of these. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have kids come in here that don't have any idea what this stuff looked like, and it's something that they can maybe take home with them and say, hey, I was at Davis, Oklahoma. I saw an old 20-something model car. I didn't know they even made them. And if I had them at home, it'd just be collecting dust. It's a family deal and mm -hmm. let them come in and, and look at it and enjoy. We don't charge an admission. It's, we operate off of donations only, so, it's and it's our retirement. So what is the oldest motorcycle or vehicle you have here? What is the... Okay, my oldest motorcycle, I guess it's this 1940 BSA right wow. over here. That's an old war bike. That's an old English bike. Uh -huh. And it was used during the Second War. And uh, it's original. It, it will still, still run. And uh, uh, I picked that up in Michigan. And it's just something that some more of the... Some more of the stuff that they're not going to make anymore. Yeah. It's a part of history. It's yeah. a part of history, yes. And I just uh, picked up this, and then then we just, uh, I'm still hunting. I've got certain bikes I'm hunting for, but oh, yeah. uh, I'll find them one of these days. Well, if um, the vehicles, the bikes, um, they're all so beautiful. Thank you. And even better, most of them still run. Yes, 95% uh, of them will run. There's one or two that's uh, one of these old cars. There's yeah. a couple of these old cars that won't won't run, but hey. Hi. If I was old, if I was 100 years old, I probably wouldn't be running either. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're really into motorcycles, vintage cars, vintage motorcycles, this is a must-see museum here in Davis, Oklahoma. It's a little, little known museum that is worth a stop and come by, say hi to Mr. Webb and check out these great old vehicles and motorcycles and everything. I haven't uh, been doing interviews in a while. I've been there for a while. I was doing one every week.